Today we're going to take a look at the 2022 Honda Shadow Phantom 750. We'll talk about what Honda changed for this year, where it fits in Honda's current cruiser model lineup, what options you have, and its specs and features. Plus, we'll start it up and show you what it sounds like with this aftermarket Vance & Hines exhaust, shoot some flames, and a lot more. But first, if you guys find any info in this video helpful, please take a second and hit the like button. Liking the video and commenting below really helps with growing this channel through YouTube's algorithm, and I really appreciate the help. So first up, where does the Phantom fit in Honda's current cruiser model lineup? We're in a tricky transition as Honda hasn't announced the entire 2022 model lineup just yet, and we'll have some updates within the next 60 days, so this info will change. The first model in the cruiser lineup is the Rebel 300 at $45.99, and then you jump up to the Rebel 500 at $62.99. Then you have the Shadow Aero 750 at $77.99, followed up by its brother that we're looking at today, the Shadow Phantom 750 at $78.99. Then you have the Rebel 1100 at $92.99, and that bike is followed up by the Fury 1300 at $10,599. I want to take a quick second and say thank you to Southern Honda Power Sports for opening their doors to me and allowing me to come pick through their inventory for these videos. They are a massive Honda Power Sports dealer here in Chattanooga, Tennessee, with tons of inventory from new Hondas to used Harleys and everything in between that they sell to people from all over the USA. So check out the link in the description below and head over to their website to see if they can save you some money on your next toy. And now that we've got that out of the way, let's jump into some more info on the Phantom. Before we do that though, let me clarify one more time, this bike is not 100% stock. It does have a Vance & Hines exhaust installed on it, but everything else is stock and I'll have that exhaust info linked in the description below if you'd like more info on it. Now the first thing we'll get into is options. Unlike its sibling, the Shadow Aero, you don't have the option of choosing ABS, anti-lock brakes, or standard brakes. Your only options on the Phantom come in the way of colors, and that's also the only thing that changed for this year. You have matte black metallic or this new color that we're looking at today that's called Adventure Green. I could think of a better word to describe this green, but we won't go there. You know, I love this color in the pictures on the release, but in person, it's, it's different. I don't think the camera picks its true color up that well, but it's definitely one to check out as it's different and a lot of people are looking for something different to help set their bike apart from a sea of black bikes. Everybody has different opinions though and especially on colors, so I'd love to hear what you guys think down in the comments below. Now let's jump into the chassis and suspension. The Phantom has a slim and lightweight, for a cruiser that is, double cradle steel frame. It has a large diameter single tube backbone and pressed steel pivot plates that come together to bring in a low chassis height while allowing for a low 25.8 inch seat height, while the seat rails and a chopped rear fender are supported by a cast rear subframe. Its overall dimensions come in with a 64.6 inch wheelbase, 5.1 inches of ground clearance with a 34 degree rake, and a 6.3 inch trail. For suspension up front, you have a non-adjustable 41 millimeter fork with 4.6 inches of travel that is attached to a billet aluminum triple tree. And out back, you have dual shocks with five position spring preload adjustability and 3.5 inches of travel. And those numbers are the same whether you go with the Shadow Phantom or Aero 750. Now when it comes to brakes, you have a single disc brake up front with a twin piston caliper on a 296 millimeter rotor while up back you have a 180 millimeter drum brake. That's another difference aside from styling between this Phantom and the Aero. If you go with the standard Aero, then it gets the exact same brake specs we just covered, but if you opt for the ABS model Aero, it drops the drum and adds in a disc brake in the rear. And those brakes are helping slow down a set of spoke wheels, 17 inch up front with a 120-90 tire, and in the rear you have a 15 inch wheel with a 160-80 tire. Now let's get into the engine and drivetrain. It has a water-cooled 52 degree 745 cc V-twin engine. The compact shape of it allows the frame central backbone to be lower, again helping the bike feel as low as possible. The engine features a long stroke single pin crankshaft to help with low RPM performance. Plus the single overhead cam engine has three valve cylinder heads with dual spark plugs, a design that Honda debuted back in 1983. 
With this, the combustion chambers have two intake valves and a single larger exhaust valve that helps achieve a 20% greater valve area than a similarly sized two valve engine. In return, helping bring in more flow and increase torque at a lower RPM. With that being said, the engine pumps out 44.6 horsepower at 5,500 RPM and 47.9 pound-feet of torque at 3,500 RPM. The engine sips fuel from a 3.7 gallon fuel tank and Honda used to rate it at 56 miles per gallon, but they don't really advertise those numbers anymore. Helping you put that power to the ground is a wide ratio 5-speed transmission paired up with a drive shaft so you don't have to worry about the maintenance of a belt or a chain. And speaking of maintenance, thankfully there's not much to it as you can see here from the maintenance schedule in the owner's manual. Plus, all of these specs are shared with the Shadow Arrow as well. Now, let's start the bike up and show you guys what it sounds like and then we'll come back for a few more things. And that's the 2022 Honda Shadow Phantom. All in all, these bikes are hard to beat for the money. Could they stand to see some upgrades in a few different areas? Of course. This bike has been unchanged since it was introduced back in 2010, aside from color options. And back then it was built off a platform that had already been around for a few years. So it's kind of starting to show its age. Now Honda skipped the 2021 production year, which would usually lead you to believe it's either being discontinued or having some updates thrown its way, but that wasn't the case, sadly. The future for it will be interesting, though, as Honda has played around with a few different Shadow 750 models over the last 10 to 15 years, like with the Spirit DC, Spirit C2, the RS, and then you have the Ace, which turned into the Arrow, and then the Phantom that was created off the Spirit C2. Long story short, the only ones to survive to this day are the Arrow and Phantom, which are still great bikes today, even though Honda hasn't shown them any love in quite a while now. But on that note, before I ramble on even more, what do you guys think about the Phantom? And what would you guys like to see Honda change in the future on this Shadow 750 platform? Plus, what do you guys think about this new Adventure Green color option? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below and I'll be joining in on the conversation too. But that's going to be a wrap for this one, guys. Thanks again to everyone for watching these. I really appreciate the support, and we'll see you in the next one. Only ones to survive. Ah, ah, ah. Jesus.